it's time for us to actually start using Scala. So in order to be able to run Scala on your computer, you have to go through some setup steps. First, you need to have Java. And if you go to java.oracle.com, it actually redirects you to a different site, but it will include downloads for Java SE, which is what you want, and you can download the JDK from here. You'll have to say that you agree to their licensing for whatever that is, and then pick the version that fits your operating system. I happen to be working under a 64-bit Linux, so I would start downloading this. You might recall this extension here from the video on compression and archiving. This is a gzipped tarball, and that is how Java is distributed to us. In order to get Scala itself, after you've installed the Java, we will go to scalalang.org and download the newest version of Scala. I already have that, so I'm not going to bother to do so. It will come as, well, we'll go ahead and click on it. It comes also as a uh, gzip tarball. And so if we throw those out of the way, those would go into my downloads directory and then I have to go through the process of installing them. Now if you're working under Windows your process of installing might be a little bit different but here on Linux I would move actually I guess I will I would move the file from my downloads into the current directory. It's still downloading at this point, so I don't want to, to do that quite yet. And then I would do the same for the Scala file. Then I could run tar with the X for extract, Z because it is gzipped up, and F for the file. And then I would give it the file that I am um, expanding here. And that would wind up creating a directory for me. I do the same thing for the Scala install, and that would leave me with directories in the case of Scala. There would be a Scala 2.7 um, for the Java. I believe I have right now update 45 for JDK 1.8.0. So you'd get these directories. You'll note that they each have subdirectories in them called bin, and that's where the ex actual executables are. Now if I want to be able to run these things, it's helpful to have them set up inside of my path. Otherwise, if I just run Scala or Java, it won't find them. So you can add into your path, and once again, depending upon your operating system, how you add things to your path is gonna be a little bit different. I am using the bash shell under Linux, and so I added a few lines to my .bashrc. I export a Java home, which has the directory for my Java, a Scala home, which has the directory for my Scala, and then I add the bin directories of both of those onto my path, so that my path is you know, the path that I had before with these things added in front of it. That gives me enough so that once I source my dot bash RC, you would only have to source it right after you edit it. Otherwise, when you open a new window, it will automatically be sourced for you. And then I can run Scala, and it drops me into the Scala read evaluate print loop. I can also run Scala and give it the name of a file. And so, we can come over here and we can make a new directory that we want to work in. It's empty. And we'll write our first Scala program. We'll call it hello world.scala because it's absolutely essential that the first program in every language be hello world.
that's what the hello world program looks like I can add a semicolon but I don't have to I'll go ahead and I'll save that and we can just show that that runs nicely as a script and it prints out what we expected so you should make sure that you can get Java and Scala set up on your machine before you go on to other videos because we are going to be working with Scala basically from everything here on out.